Hi parents, this is a tutorial to help talk you through the PowerSchool Unified Classroom Platform. I'm starting this understanding that everybody has created their account and they know how to get to the Unified Classroom Platform. You could open up any browser and go to classroom.powerschool.com, type in your ID, which is the email that you chose and the password that you chose. I am running this from a computer screen. If you use a device like a tablet or an iPad or a phone and you're using the browser, then it should look the same. This is not the app. Um, I don't have a tutorial plan for the app. The app will not show you all the features that a computer will. Um, but you're welcome to download the app and look at what you can find um, based on what I show you here. Okay, so just for starters, this is what's called a dashboard. This is where you're going to open up to. The first thing I want to show everybody is where your personal settings are. If you click on your initials over here, okay, don't be alarmed. I created my parent account under my maiden name, so it doesn't say NS, it says NK. Click on your initials and then click on settings. Here you have my settings and my account. Click on my account and you'll be sent to your account information. So here you can verify your name. You can create a nickname if you want. You can associate your account with a phone number. So if you wanted to get alerts or updates to a cell phone, this is where you would just set that up you could, I'm sorry, uh, that went to 55. you could uh, edit your email, you can put up a picture or whatever you want to do about the information for your account. If you do make any changes, make sure you click save changes at the end. The other tab here is about notifications. This is about alerts and any updates you might want to get. So again, confirming your email, if you wanted a mobile phone, and here are your options. Go across the screen to the right-hand side, and here's where you would check or X off the different items that you would like to have. I know the screen share doesn't show it so clearly, but go through each of these items and you could select what your preferences are for how you want to be alerted to that information. And again, make sure you click Save Changes when you're done, okay? That's how you would make any changes to your parent account settings. So now going back to the main page, I'm gonna click on class pages. A class pages is not available from every spot. Okay, right now I'm not actually in a class, I'm just in some all classes. I will show you a few class pages um, soon, okay? Uh, when you want to view different classes, you can click on this tile here. This tile here gives you the classes associated with a child. This child, okay, this is all fake information. We created some fake students um, so that no one's personal information is publicized. So this um, playgroup student is named Name3. Uh, we click on the, whoops. That's not good. Okay, sorry about that. Um, you click on the arrow down and then all the children associated with your account should be here. So I'm going to click on um, sixth grade. Okay, here I have only a few because we didn't enroll this fake student into many more classes, but of course the sixth graders would have many classes. And then we have a, um, a fourth grader here. Okay, and I can actually show you the um, the class page for this. Well, actually, I can't. Okay, never mind. Um, let me go back. Let me show you something else. I'll go back to the class page in a minute. To see um, grades, okay, all the grades, all the data for your child, you're going to go to quick links and click on portal login page. 
this creates a whole nother tab. You notice that? Okay, we have the Power School Learning tab is still here. And now we're in grades and attendance page. So looking at our sixth grader, we have a lot of information here. Um, if it was a real sixth grader, there would be many more subjects. Right now we're only listing these few. And you see these are the marks for Q3. It's only showing current classes, but if your child was moved from one class to another and you want to see the marks from those classes, you would click on this, show drop classes also. And now we see the older ones. So I see that from um, Mrs. Sultan's class, he, um, my child had had a meeting expectations in Q2. So that's very valid for many middle schoolers that are changing classes. So those old classes are considered um, dropped classes. So you can click on that. So now let's say I want to get more details from Mrs. Shamula's math class. I click on the grade. And now I can see all the assignments that are listed in this term. And I can see scores. And if there's comments, I could click on viewing comments. If I wanted to look at standards grades, if I want to look at the subtopics for those classes, click on standards grades and click on expand all. That's right here. Click on expand all. I see all the details for all the classes. So here I see the specific, specific categories under Chumash. And I see all the categories for the social emotional development marks. And I see the same thing for computers. And I would see the same thing for math and so on. Okay, so this is where your details of that data would be. Collapse all, and now I just see basic information. Go back to grades and attendance. And this is where I was before. Also from this spot, something very relevant that everyone should be aware of is the SWIFT reach tab. Okay, this is very important. This is where the printed reports would be. Um, checklists and so on are here. This is what got emailed to you from the office. What you do need to be aware of is that these expire. These only last for, um, for about a month. So if you want to keep a record, you have to download them to your computer. So you would click on it and it would open up an Adobe page where you can download and, and keep it for as long as you may want. Okay, the email that you got, you know, even though the email will stay in your in your email account forever, the link in the email is linked to this. So that link will also expire. So you will not have a record unless you download it. If there are any significant changes to your child's scores, so sometimes there are errors, sometimes teachers amend the marks, um, you would be getting an updated report. And of course, really the best way to view current status is to look here because if you click on grades and attendance, this is always live. This is always the most recent. If you click on grade history, this is when you can go back to other terms. Okay. Um, also very helpful for middle school parents and students, my schedule, that's down here. So you, if your child doesn't know what the, his or her schedule is, um, right now with the remote learning, that's been a confusion sometimes. So you have access to that, my schedule. This is incomplete because again, I have a fake student here, but um, you would have the complete list of your child's schedule right here. Okay, so this is the view for a middle schooler. Looking at a fourth grader, same layout, a okay, listing all the different subjects. And again, you can click on the score and you can get a whole list 
of all the data. In this case, you see this one actually has a comment attached to it. That's the conversation blurb here. So I can click on it. I'm sorry, click on the word view. And now I can see, had great trouble on this exam. That was the comment here. Um, also again, click on standards grades. And here you can get the breakdown of all those subcategories. Click on expand all. And we have the grades for the individual categories for the different classes. Some classes have more than others. And of course, again, this is a fake student, so we did not fill in all the data, um, but you get definitely the idea of how to view the information. Looking at a second grader, same idea. Second grade does not use the grade book as much, so it would not be as full. And then um, early childhood, I'm not even sure if we would see, yeah, we got some stuff here too. Okay, and again, you can click on it and click on standards grades and click on expand and you have the whole gambit right there. Just also for your knowledge, this district code, if you were to try to use the app, this is the code they would ask you for, HRXJ. It's the same for all of your children. Um, that's how you would get connected to the app. The app does have some good features. Again, I'm not showing any training on that, but um, you can download it and play around and see what you can find. Okay, so I do wanna show you the class pages as promised because that is where most of our teachers are posting links and resources, such as, which has become very vital during our distance learning. You may have heard that uh, PowerSchool has been having some glitches because of the high demand on class pages. So because of that, I can't show you exactly the class page through this setup I have here. Um, but when you did want to view class page, you'd have to click out of this view. This view is the SIS. SIS stands for Student Information System. So the student information system is where the grades and the data are. Power School Learning is the learning piece. That's where the class page is and where there are other tools. So we can't view it this way, but I have it prepared in a different way. Oops, sorry, um, here we go. So this is a class page that belongs to Mrs. Maison. She's a fourth grade Judaic studies teacher. This is what her class page looks like. Notice she has multiple pages here. You could click on any links here to go to different pages on different topics. She has schedules, she has links to PowerSchool, to, um, to videos. She has some information here as well. The class page really is laid out kind of like a newspaper. You could scroll down and um, you can click on any number of items here. The grades and activities and calendar may not be synced up. I don't know if Mrs. Maison has been using those right now, but this is the, the view of her class. The middle school teachers are using it a little differently. This is actually Mr. Morgano's eighth grade English class. So he has lots of instructional information here. Uh, some students have been instructed to upload responses and upload work to PowerSchool. I'm not showing you how to do that because parents don't have that access. Um, even though you can view assignments and you can view what's here, you would not be able to be sending in any actual work. If your child is having trouble submitting work through PowerSchool, please reach out to the teacher. The teacher should really be demonstrating during the Zoom lessons how students are expected to navigate the platform and submit their work. But from the parent end, this is really all that you need to know at this time. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the school and any of the Power School leadership team will be happy to help. Thank you.